All right, welcome back guys. So today we're gonna to do a follow on to our previous video, uh, nine mil versus 10 mil versus 45. Uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, I will link that in the description down below so you can go check that out uh, and you'll be able to get some comparisons of what we're trying to see here. So in the last video, I used uh, some hand loads for the 10 millimeter uh, and mostly factory loadings for the uh, 45 and, and nine millimeter. And I said I was going to come back and try to do the Underwood versions of those rounds. Uh, so what we've got on deck is the uh, 200 grain jacket hollow point from Underwood right at 1250 feet per second. Uh, this is the same 200 grain nozzler we had loaded up in the last test. Uh, just this will be at a higher velocity. Uh, then we have the 180 grain XTP uh, rated at 1300 feet per second. Again, same projectile we used in the last test. Just again, this will be at a higher velocity. And we have 180 grain bonded jacket hollow point at 1300 feet per second. Uh, as far as I know, this is a spear gold dot loading. Uh, we didn't use a spear gold dot loading for the 10 mil in the last test, so kind of curious to see how this is going to perform at this velocity. Uh, for our 9 mil, we were going to do the plus P plus version of the spear gold dot since in the last test we did the 124 grain plus P, but when I ran the plus P plus is over the crony, uh, they were giving the rate at 1300 feet per second, but that last batch of spear factory loadings that I had, uh, for whatever reason, were crony and quite high uh, and I was getting about I think on the test we got about 1290 feet per second so we're within 10 feet per second so there's really no point in doing uh, the Underwood version of this loading just because that's just how it worked out that you're not going to see any difference with 10 feet per second as far as expansion penetration all that but what we do have is uh, Federal HST this is 147 grain load so I'm curious to see what a, a good defensive round in the uh, heavy for caliber loading will do so that's what we're going to put through uh, the test in the 9mm. Um, both uh, same guns as last time, Glock 20 and the Glock 19 with factory threaded barrel. Uh, so roughly the same barrel length, 4.5, 4.6 inches or so. Um, and what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and show you the test setup and then we'll get this going. All right, so uh, let me show you the setup. So what we're going to have is a standard Aquafina water bottle. This is uh, about 17 ounces. It's roughly two, about two and a half inches thick or so. And the idea of this is to initiate the expansion, so the initial penetration to muscle tissue and what have you. Uh, this is to initiate expansion. Then we're going to have a two by eight behind that. This is going to simulate a very large bone structure. Um, and then behind that, we have our standard five inch thick, uh, one gallon water jugs. Uh, we're going to cover the Aquafina with four layers of cotton t-shirt. That's not supposed to really be a, a like a clothing test, but what I typically find is that expansion in game animals and whatnot is usually uh, a little less than what you'll see in just a bare uh, water jug type test. So we're going to use that to sort of uh, delay the expansion slightly or reduce the expansion slightly, hopefully, uh, so we don't get a, a over expansion, if you would, a uh, in this material. Uh, but this is not supposed to simulate clothing like a heavy clothing test or anything like that. Uh, so again, four layers of t-shirt. It's going to cover the aquafina. We want to see expansion in this. So we want to, we want our round to initiate its expansion in this. Uh, and then we we're going to smack the board. Hopefully we'll penetrate it and we'll see how deep it goes. Uh, in this case, as long as the round's expanded, the further the penetration, the better. Remember, the idea of this is to be applicable to more of a field cartridge where you have much larger four-legged critters with large bone structures and thicker bodies. And uh, we will be firing these through the chronograph, so hopefully we'll get some readings on that uh, so we know the impact velocities. All right, let's get this going. All right, up first, this will be the 200 grain Nosler jacket at hollow point from Underwood. One, one, six, two. All right, so coming up here, uh, we got a good hit on our board. Uh, you could tell by the water bottle being destroyed that we got good expansion in the water bottle. Have one, two, three. And looks like we entered into the side of jug four and I see the projectile in there. I don't feel anything on the back. Yep, it looks like we just entered in through the side and it just stopped inside the fourth jug. Okay, so that loading was rated for 1,250 feet per second, but for whatever reason, we only got 1162. So um, that's about the performance I would expect from my hand loads out of a six inch barrel. Um, so actually this is kind of interesting in that regard, but uh, I don't know what to say guys, that's that's factory underwood loading, so 
We can't keep shooting until we get a velocity we hope for. Uh, we just got to go at what we got. Nonetheless, looks like good performance. I'm going to go ahead and get this out of here. All right, and there we are, fully expanded. Um, yeah, not bad performance. So let's go ahead and keep this going. We'll get the 180 grain XTP up next. All right, this will be the 180 grain XTP from Underwood. 1199. Huh. All right. Uh, Found our water bottle, obvious expansion, uh, nice hit on the board, some fragments in the first jug, second, third, yep, it's in the third jug and there's a dent or a crack on the back of the third jug, so we'll go ahead and dig this out of here. All right. Well, I don't know what to say about the velocities, guys. That's uh, factory underwood loading. So uh, when we get done with all this, I'll fire a couple over the chronograph just to confirm what we're getting is accurate, and I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, but this is actually the same velocity, actually a little less, uh, than my hand load. Uh, I think the hand load was about 1214, but one thing's for sure, we are seeing consistency. So that's actually kind of cool. Uh, it looks like uh, this setup is giving consistent results. Uh, pretty good performance out of the XTP, three jugs of penetration, full penetration of three jugs, good expansion. Uh, just don't know what to say about the velocities. Uh, like I said, I will shoot them over the crony when we get done with this just to make sure everything is, is on the up and up. But again, it is what it is. All right, we'll uh, try out the gold dot next. All right, this will be the 180 grain gold dot from Underwood. One, two, seven, four. All right, so got expansion in our bottle. First jug. Second jug. Penetration through the second jug. And it's in jug three, and I do feel a slight dent on the back of jug three. So it looks like we did reach the back of jug three. All right, let's go ahead and get this out of here. Okay. Well, that's completely mangled. Huh. Looks like, yeah, the jacket almost separated from the core. That's pretty impressive on a bonded bullet. Didn't quite separate, but it led to a fairly small recovered diameter. Uh, these trailing um, pieces are what's left of the jacket uh, actually probably wouldn't be making contact with any tissue uh, as the pressure wave propagates outward from the nose of the bullet. It'll actually push the tissue out of the way before these trailing pieces. So this point, even though it penetrated decent, I'm going to say the XTP appears to be a little bit better projectile for this situation. Now the velocities on that d were more what we were expecting at 1274. Um, you know, I may try the XTP. I'll shoot one or two over the crony and see if I can get those kind of velocities and then maybe I'll try again because I got enough material I, c I should be able to get a couple more tests in but let's go ahead and knock the nine mil out first and then we'll hit that up all right this will be the 147 grain hst from our nine millimeter one zero six one All right, we got some expansion in our water jug. Uh, obviously, there's less temporary cavity when we're dealing with this reduced amount of energy and velocity, but nonetheless, expansion and penetration appears evident. Jug two, jug three, 
and we have a dent on the back of jug three. Wow, that's uh, that's not bad performance for a nine mil. Let's uh, get this out of here. And classic HST, excellent expansion. A little dinged up from hitting that board, but uh, yeah, that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, hmm, interesting. And judging by the chronograph readings, um, there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the crony. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot a couple 10 mil over the crony, uh, those other XTP and nozzle loads just to see. Uh, and if we get higher velocity, maybe we, those are just some lower loads. If I, I should have just enough left to maybe get one or two more tests in. Uh, if we get the same velocity, then so be it. Uh, but pretty impressive performance from our 9 mil there, though. Okay, so I had some real strange chronograph readings. Uh, something's going on with that other crony, as best I could tell. So what I did is I changed it out for another. Uh, I fired one of the HST 9 mil rounds over it, and I got 1033, which is pretty much what I would expect. So it appears everything's working okay with this chronograph. So uh, we'll go ahead, and what we're going to do, we're going to put one 200-grain nozzler, then one 180-grain gold dot, and then three 180-grain XTPs, and we'll see what... Uh, what kind of results we get on this uh, different chronograph. 1146, that was a 200 grain nozzler. Now for the gold dot. 1259, and now for the XTPs. 1250, 1234, and one, two, four, five. Okay, so it doesn't really look like there's uh, anything wrong with this chronograph anyway, and the other crony seems like it gave accurate results uh, until it, whatever fritzed on it for the moment. Maybe some water got into it or something. Uh, so these rounds are not coming up to spec. Um, I don't know what to say, guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and shoot one more XTP just to do. Maybe we'll magically get a higher velocity like we did with the gold dot. Um, see what happens. All right, I have just enough material to get one more shot. Uh, we'll give this whirl again with the 180 grain XTP. Hopefully we'll get a higher velocity than we did last time and see if that changes our results any. One, two, five, four. Looks like that's about as good as we're going to get as far as velocity, so let's go give it a look. All right, so water bottle's destroyed. Solid hit on the board. Looks like we finally found a <laughs> fracture point on this board, but I guess it served its purpose. Let's see, we have first jug, second jug, third jug, and this is pretty cool. There it is actually embedded in the back of the third jug it cracked the fourth jug it caused a little leak but obviously it didn't enter so <laughs> see if i can get this out of here all right i'm gonna have to dig this out all right there it is uh it looks like it folded back kind of squish things up just a little more a little smaller recovered diameter probably just do that slightly higher velocity but really didn't change much uh, virtually the same penetration although it did actually stick uh, into the fourth jug or it was stuck in the back of the third cracked the fourth but not a lot of difference in terms of performance pretty solid performance though but uh, yeah so we'll go ahead and take this back to do a little tabletop and uh, wrap this up all right, guys, there you have it. 9mm versus 10mm this go around. 9mm, uh, solid performance. This HST really performed quite well. Uh, expansion was on par with that of the 10mm rounds, and penetration was on par with that of the 180 grain loadings. Um, now, noticeably less temporary cavity, particularly in the uh, first water jug or water bottle, uh, but you know, it's lower energy, lower velocity, but nonetheless, pretty solid performance out of the little 9mm there. Uh, 10 millimeter, so underwood ammo. So this is what everyone tells you got to use underwood. Your your hand loads are too light, or whatever the case might be. Um, this is kind of been my experience with underwood with the 10 millimeter. 9 millimeter, I get the published velocities. Uh, 10 millimeter, I always seem to come up a little short. Now I'm just not sure why this. This is factory fresh. I think I ordered these in and got these in maybe last month. 
So this is factory fresh. Um, we didn't hit the advertised velocity in some cases. We were quite a bit off, uh, 100 feet per second in the case of the 200 grain. Actually, 100 feet per second too in the case of the uh, 180 grain XTP. However, we did try to do some retests with the XTP to get that higher impact velocity. And we did get a higher impact velocity at 1250-ish. Uh, and of course our uh, gold dot we got the highest that I think it was about 1264 so what do I think about this so the XTP seems to be built well enough that it handles 10 mil velocities fairly well however one thing I wanted to note is when we pushed it to 1254 we didn't see that much difference in penetration a little bit more but not that much difference however we did get a smaller recovered diameter and that had more to do with it folding the pedals back tighter against the uh, the main body of the projectile. So something to consider there. We did, didn't really get a whole lot more penetration, but, and we ended up with slightly less recovered diameter, which is probably why we just had that slight bit extra penetration. Um, so take that for what it is. Uh, one thing's for sure, this test is consistent. We're getting consistent results, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that means we might be able to do more with this type of stuff later on. Uh, 200 grain nozzle again gave uh, the deepest penetration of the rounds tested, so it's been consistent at that. Um, I'm not sure how much more you'd have got out of it if you'd actually got that 1,250 feet per second. It looks like as velocity increases on these particular types of rounds, these non-bonded bullets and whatnot, it looks like all we do is squish things back just a little bit more against the main body, and that might lead to some slightly more penetration, uh, but we didn't see we didn't see a huge difference there. In fact, I think this came up just a little shorter than last time, although it was still in jug four. Um, but yeah, so not much change there. And of course our gold dot, the gold dot is designed um, primarily to work at 40 caliber velocities, around a thousand feet per second range, actually even less than that in many cases. So it looks like at this velocity, this bullet's just overdriven. Uh, I know this mangled mess looks impressive. However, keep in mind that when this round is pushing through tissue and you have that temporary stretch cavity, that pressure wave propagating off the nose of this round moving out, it may actually force the tissue out of the way of all this trailing material before it has a chance to make contact. So what you potentially might end up with is this small recovered diameter off this nose is actually going to be potentially your permanent cavity. So keep that in mind when you see something like this mangled up like this uh, that, that may or may not actually translate into any real wounding effect. In fact, it may reduce the wounding effect. So this gold dot round unfortunately just looks overdriven at these velocities. For me anyway, you might see something different here. I don't know. That's just me. That's my opinion. Um, XTP seems good to go and the nozzle seems good to go. Although I'm not sure how much more I'd want to juice up my own hand loads after seeing this. I just really don't see a tremendous difference that's worth the extra recoil um, and whatnot. And safety factors and all that come along with with trying to push things to the max and maybe this is exactly what's going on with underwood maybe they're toning it back a bit after the initial press uh, i don't know i don't know there's three different loadings uh with similar sort of off velocity readings and we did try multiple times so all right guys let me know what you think about all this how did everything stack up was this what you expected uh did you see any good performance here did you see poor performance uh, what did you see here personally my takeaway on this is this 200 grain nozzle and this 180 grain xtp driven uh, 1100 and change and a 1200 feet per second ish seems to be pretty optimal as far as penetration expansion uh, as a field cartridge while not being overdone um unfortunately that gold dot just doesn't seem like it's where it should be and of course, uh, our 9mm HST actually performed very well, uh, all things considered. So I think uh, I would still prefer to have the 10mm if I was out in the field and had to face a larger four-legged critter, uh, just for maybe that extra penetration and whatnot that we typically see over the 9mm. But nonetheless, uh, if you all you have was your 9mm and you're packing some pretty decent uh, loadings here, shot placement is king, so keep that in mind. All right, guys, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, like the channel, share the video. It helps things out. Uh, as always, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I appreciate those comments, but please keep those comments professional, and I'll see you guys next time.